Okay, for the second part of this video, we're going to head on over to the wiki for our project, Phenom X7 eTrigger, uh, up at Google Code. Um, first thing we'll go over, um, you're going to need an ISP programmer, um, and if you want to find out if your programmer is uh, sufficient or compatible, uh, we're going to be using AVR Dude, uh, which will write uh, the programming, the hex programming, onto the chip. Uh, you can go ahead and click the link I've supplied there and scroll down. Uh, we're going to look for the dash C programmer um, option. I'm going to scroll down quite a bit. Um, and here they'll give you a list of all the various types of ISPs that are compatible. Um, the one that I'm going to use, which seems to be pretty cheap on the market these days, um, is the USB ASP. Uh, programmer. You can follow this link and they'll show you actually how to build one if you like um, or several places you can buy it. You can Google it or go to Amazon and look it up. You should find several different places you can buy it. Um, and uh, as I mentioned in the other video, uh, as long as it supports ISP, uh, it's supported here by AVR Dude uh, and hopefully supports uh, 5 volts or supplies 5 volts. Um, that would be a, a pretty good programmer for you. And hopefully it has drivers for your operating system and, and is compatible. So going back to the wiki, um, I've included a couple instructions here. Um, please read over these. I'm not going to go over it now. But uh, basically you're doing this at your own risk. Um, once you try to program to the chip, it's going to wipe out the manufacturer's program. Uh, so you know, enter at your own risk. There's no turning back. I can't copy the code off the chip. Um, there's uh, something called a lock bit uh, that preserves the code and prevents uh, anyone else from taking it off the chip and writing it anywhere else. So it's impossible to back it up. I do not have a backup of it. Um, so if you're if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to be committed fully. Uh, if you're not happy with some of the programming that we've uh, provided, uh, you can submit an enhancement request, or if there's a defect with it, a problem that's not working properly, uh, if it's software related, we can try and fix that, um, get some releases out to you. Right now we're only in version uh, 0.3. Uh, it, it's pretty stable, at least in my gun. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but I'm definitely open to suggestions. Uh, we can uh, include more modes and things like that into the gun, make it really robust. Um, so for that part, I will need your help um, in designing this. So please comment and, and provide some suggestions of where we can go forward with this. Um, so below here, how to write to the chip. Uh, there's information on pinouts. Um, we're going to need this for uh, whichever programmer you do decide to get, if it's ISP or uh, another version. Um, they will have these pins listed on them these pins will line up exactly with these pins on the Phenom chip. These are the pins that you'll need, 1, 14, 4, um, etc. They match up directly, MOSI to MOSI, MISO to MISO, and so on. Um, this is a picture of where the pins go. You saw in my other video how I applied them to the top, the middle, and the bottom, as well as on the other side, the top and the bottom two. Um, this is the reason why these are the, the appropriate pins, the power supply and the ground on the right, uh, reset, MOSI, etc. Um, the reason this is on a breadboard is I've actually taken my chip out um, so I could build the software. Um, that's not something you need to do uh, unless you want to um, reprogram or basically redo what I did uh, by feeling out what the original manufacturer's chip did so you can create your own. Um, not something you'll need to do to put this software on your chip. Um, so don't worry about soldering and, and such. This is really just to demonstrate which pins you're going to need to apply to uh, when it's in the, the trigger. Um, I gave a list of programmers, so this is the exact programmer that I used. I uh, bought it from Amazon. I paid a uh, apparently a, a high price for the same board. Um, you can find other vendors, including eBay, that sell it for somewhere like three or four dollars. Um, but no matter where, you should find one that's at least under ten dollars. Um, 
so it's it's uh, not as expensive as buying a full new board um, like an $80 board out there uh, this is going to be the the bulk of your expense um, you may want to buy some jumper wire kinda like the ones I have or in the previous video used uh, to program the chip just to make things easier um, so an, an additional expense but those are um, three dollars or so um, so with that armed with your ISP and your leader wire um, here are some of the commands we're going to do uh, you're going to want to download the latest version of the program right now we have point three um, you want to save that to a, a location and right now um, I have the commands set up um, to run from the C colon temp directory on Windows um, you'll have to change this if you're running another operating system like uh, Linux or Mac, uh, wherever AVR Dude will run, whatever you have installed. Um, so CMP or C temp is where I have them right now. Go ahead and save that off, and now we'll begin running our our uh, commands. So here we have just a verification. Um, since I've only seen one phenom. Um, this uh, intimately. Uh, I'd want to make sure that um, if you guys do get started in this um, you're programming to the same chip. I don't want anybody to burn anything out that's not proper so please run this first command and verify that your device signature matches what I have listed here. Um, this means that your chip is the same as my chip um, and should accept the programming uh, that I've given it. Um, this first command if we copy that, bring that over to our command line uh, where we've installed AVR Dude. Um, go ahead and paste that in there and hit enter. You'll see a couple lines here. Um, don't worry so much about this uh, cannot set SCK period. Um, some uh, USB ASP programmers uh, will have a, a problem with their firmware um, but so far this has not caused a problem. You can just ignore that message. Uh, so here's your device signature. Please make sure this matches. Um, we have it on the screen here as well as the wiki. Um, if that's set, then that means you've got the proper chip. Uh, you can now come down here and take a look at this first command. And what this is going to do, uh, this is the no turn back zone. Um, the, the command dash E here is going to erase the original programming on the chip. Um, and that's going to uh, remove the manufacturer's programming and also reset the lock bits so we're able to write our new code to it. Um, so go ahead, copy that off uh, when you're ready to make that decision. Um, paste that into your command window and hit return. You should see um, a lot of this happening, reading, to, reading the chip, verifying, and then finally writing our hex um, out to the chip. Um, so now your chip has uh, the first part of the programming. Um, the rest you're going to need to set the fuses, which is another part of the chip, just to match what we have. Go ahead and paste that in there and hit return. You should see it write that out pretty quick. And same thing for the next two fuses. Paste them in there, hit return. And paste that in there and hit return. Now, I'm cheating a little bit because I have my chip hooked up to a development board so I don't have to hold the pins while I'm doing this um, for testing purposes. Uh, I realize that you're going to be holding these with your two hands and hitting the enter button with your nose. It's going to be very hard to copy and paste things. Um, so once you've made the decision that this is the route you want to go and you've at least done this part um, on your own you can paste these into a batch file in Windows and uh, basically run them all with one command so you don't have to worry about hitting you know, return multiple times or asking somebody to paste them in there for you. Um, I know that's, that's, uh, that's a big struggle. That's actually the hardest part um, of most of this. Uh, but once you get past that, um, you'll be able to program the software on there. Um, and hopefully be on your way with the new software. Um, so please, uh, you know, check out the the wiki. Leave comments, suggestions, uh, any questions you may have along the way. Um, please let me know. Um, 
if you're successful, if you had issues, let me know what they are, and uh, we'll try to work through them. Um, other